Okay, so I have this Afropunk article. Let me pull it up. Uh, I have it on my messenger. Okay, it's entitled uh, saying I'm not into black girls isn't a preference. It's racist. Um, they, they copy and paste this from another site. But this is what it... And it's funny how they're talking about, you know, it, it's aimed towards black men, but they have, like, a, a, a black woman on a white dude, and it's like... It's this kind of, like, ret retaliation shit. But, you know, then again, it doesn't have any merit because, you know, when white women... Oh, no, right, when black women swirl, you know, we're, we can't hold them accountable for their blackness. All of a sudden, they're untouchable. And... It, it always ends up being into the realm of it's because of your niggas dating the white girls. And, you know, I, I was just like, nah, I'm not fucking handle. I was like, whatever, you know, whatever. Um, but let me read, read, let me read this article because I had a point, but I forgot it. Okay, here we go. Under white supremacy, black women can be lots of things. They aren't seen as dateable. Guess what? White people who believe this are racist. I wonder if I got it wrong. If this is about white people who don't date black girls, let me let me let me read on to it. One of the timeless but no less relevant and humanistic cliches we issue to ourselves and others about dating and intimate companionship is that a person's character not their racial makeup is or should be the only criteria that makes the makes oh that matters when deciding whether or not a whether or not to pursue a relationship this is at least what we tell ourselves and how we would like to believe we navigate our way through the oftentimes treacherous terrain of the modern dating scene sounds pretty basic right assuming we measure up to this um adage for it's a fact that most of us tend to spout nonsense contradict and double think our asses off when we open up about our dating life truth true everyone has certain preferences that they actually unconsciously look for and when it comes to finding someone who possesses those preferences someone who meets that criteria However unrealistic or fantastical they are, many of them can be extremely short-sighted and superficial. For example, judging whether or not a person is suitable to have a meal sh and share your bed with basis soul on um, their height, weight, eye shape, hair texture, and skin color, etc. But it's those deeper psychological, emotional, intellectual qualities that we believe should matter. Ultimately, at least... That's the idea. However, it's worth asking repeatedly if we see this ideal, if we actually center this value IRL when we make our dating choices. Judging by what I'm reading, we're far off from it. According to professional matchmaker Emma Tesler, who authored a stinging report stinging I don't know why I put another ING report on her client dating habits for the establishment an overwhelming majority of folks see uh, of the folks she interviewed admitted to having racialized dating preference report Tesla 9% of our clients report having racial preferences and several sentences later that of the 90% of the reported racial preferences, 99, not 89.9% are preferences for white people. 89%, that's abysmal. Online dating uh, service, OkCupid, considered by some wonks to possess the most progressive and sophisticated Algorithm, algorithm among today's dating apps reach a similar conclusion. Tesla documents the results 
drawn from the stats recorded on OkCupid blog, authoring an article in 2016 that was published in the Elite the Daily the, the Elite Day, forgive me, dot com. Nikki McGolster agrees with Tesla that black people face formidable roadblocks in the dating world for black women. She highlights it's worse. It's an established fact. McGolster observes that dating for black women is terrible. Going on, going to note that dating apps are harbingers of undisguised prejudice. Terrible indeed. Men don't write black women back. I'm gonna I'm gonna really get into that. That that's a complete myth. But I'm really tearing into that. What's clear from Tesla's data and the personal testimony of McGonagall is that a person's race in the twenty first century, whether we're referring to heterosexual, homosexual or homosexual dating landscape factors significantly into how people choose to pair. In other words, the mark of blackness or halo of white is continuing to determine who's eligible to be bay. I'm just kind of skimming off. I really don't want to really get into it. Uh, let me see. Okay, there's a sentence here. That, as, as the last in line to be approached by non-black men. Oh, okay. <laughs> Even if they reach out to them, black women attempting to date while black are especially vulnerable to be swallowed by, as one writer says, a black hole of negativity. Black women can be mammies, healers, Jezebels. They can be eye rollers, teeth suckers. They can, also, can even be temporary fetish. But if white supremacy is to function without the wrong inter interruption, they can never be dateable or maritable. What is to say that they can never be seen as a body of the same size plus any, of any other race of women? Guess what? Who is this racist? White and black people who do this feed the legacy of white supremacy. And look at that. I really don't want all this shit. But yet, the thumbnail for the article, it has a white dude and a black woman dating and they seemingly appear happy. I want to just kind of get into it. I really don't know what black women use as OkCupid for dating websites. I don't know if that's the one you have to pay. I'm oftentimes hearing these little articles about uh, black women having a hard time finding matches on OkCupid, Match, or, you know, these other paid sites. So, you know, a lot of, I don't know a lot of black women. I don't know any black woman who uses these websites, these paid uh, websites to uh, to meet people. I will say that I feel like most black women use free ones like Plenty of Fish. That that's a very common one, and I I noticed with the statistics, the, the, they never use Plenty of Fish. And the funny thing is, it's a very popular site. You watch Catfish. Uh, most of the time, they will say that they've met through Plenty of Fish. And it's funny that they don't use the data or ask for data from Plenty of Fish. And, you know, I find that the women on Plenty of Fish tend to be a little bit more realistic or it exposes the bullshit that is in there. Uh, I want to expose that this bullshit that women are not, you know, black women are not getting, you know, messages. I'm only speaking on Plenty of Fish, but... um you know, women are women. Dudes aren't going to, like, just sit back. And I use Plenty of Fish, and, you know, when I use it, I usually have mixed and black women, so... Uh, and, you know, Hispanic, but, you know, usually it's mostly between... You know, most of the time when you put that in there, it's mostly black women. Um, but the issue that I have, and this this is the thing that they never really focus on, is that... I don't think a lot of black women use in online dating. And um, I guess you can count Tinder, but the confusing thing with Tinder is that both people have to like each other. And so it can be, you know, I had a hard time using Tinder to where, you know, I'm liking attractive women and 
I'm not getting the same, you know, cooperation, whether they're, they're offline or they're not interested. It, it, it ends up being a frustrating thing to deal with. Um, I will say when I'm on Plenty of Fish, I don't find any of the women there um, appealing. And many black YouTubers have exposed this. Uh, there's a guy, I forgot his username, but he made funny videos about um, his sexual escapades on Plenty of Fish. And I thought I was the only one. And there's another guy years ago who did the same thing. And he talking about how uh, women, black women's profiles on Plenty of Fish look like complete shit. You know, I can go on it right now and I'll be seeing obscene pictures and granted nine times out of ten there may not even be real black women it could be just dudes revenge porn it could be just white dudes it could be that but i will say it's because of that piss poor promotion or that piss poor image that maybe hey a lot of black folks aren't really trying to talk to black women because when i go on there and i look at just black women on the on the search I'm seeing crazy pictures of odd, really badly shaped nude pics, uh, women in underwear, these these escorts, prostitution, shit to where you, you're seeing like like a, a like this is the typical page profile you will see. You will see like a woman's behind and her underwear, and sometimes they don't even wear underwear. And then what'll happen? It'll it'll say like. Um, the headline will, will be like, I don't fuck with broke niggas. And then the bio would say, charges a thousand uh, per hour. Uh, head is bonus. Uh, you know, whatever. You know, we can charge that to the game. That's, that's some fake Craigslist type profile. Um, another thing is that, um, when it comes to legitimate black women who seem to be real, their profiles are lazy. You know, they put like, a, they put literally nothing. They just, uh, they just button mash just to get the word count in. And they put like one or two profiles and they, they literally expect you to like message you back. And, and I'm to, to message them and I'm like, the, the pictures are in poor quality. You're not saying much. The pictures are awkward. And I'm like, just just get off the site. You know, just, just get off. Uh, I, I oftentimes see women who have decent profiles and what they'll fuck it up is where you try to get to know them. And I, I've had this problem before when I first started using Plenty of Fish and I had it recently I haven't I, I, I experience this every now and then and I'll see where I'm talking I'm in a conversation and she ends up it, it go it's, it's going good but she messes it up so let's just say I let's say I ask how's the weather Oh, no, no, no. It's usually personal questions where you ask them, you know, tell me something interesting about yourself. What do you do for a living? Uh, you know, what are your hobbies? And then they will, like, be angry with you. I don't feel like talking about myself. I don't feel like talking. I'm like, it's a social site. I mean, what do you expect me to do? Because I'm not going to you know, write paragraphs about myself and then the only answers or replies that I get it are, okay, cool, nice, one words, you know. I'm not going to do that. You know, you, you're expecting me to write paragraphs to entertain you and you're not even trying to meet people. You're not even trying to get to know anybody, you know. And a lot of these these articles that talk about this shit, they don't expose that. They don't expose the laziness and the piss poor quality of black women on these sites. It's piss poor. 
you literally spend people of of any race of men to fall in love with these suspect photos. And I, I mean, excuse me, but when I did searches for other races of women, they look real. They look legit. Like nine times out of ten, they do look real and legit, especially from those of white and Asian women. And surprisingly, I don't see a lot of fake Asian women pages. <laughs> I don't. I don't see a lot of those, you know, fake pages. But when I when I go to you know black women, or black women who claim to be mixed or whatever, the pages are piss poor. I I literally have to hide the screen when I'm using the freaking website because a lot of the pictures are, are are grotesque. You know, it's, but I'm just saying, you know, I'm, I'm tired of, you know, this one-sidedness. Sorry about that. I'm just tired of the one-sidedness. I'm about to make a part two.